What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So as you've seen in a recent video, I was able to harvest a buck, which was great. And another part of the process is field dressing, cleaning up, and processing the meat yourself. Well, I do all that, but I didn't film it. Reason being, I didn't want to show that stuff with YouTube being as sensitive as it is to some of that. So just left it out. I don't even want to go down that road. So. I'm getting ready to show you one of the recipes I like to cook. So I'm going to be cooking backstrap. So for those of you who don't know, the backstrap is the equivalent of what a New York strip would be. The other better cut on a deer is going to be your tenderloins, which those are found inside the rib cage. Uh, that's not really the best comparison, but I don't have a deer here to show you exactly where they are. But they're found inside the rib cage, and that's the equivalent of a filet mignon. They are good cuts, but they are rather tiny. So it's not something that's big enough to really feed a family. So tonight I'm actually cooking a dinner for my daughter's birthday. Uh, I told her, you know, we got the deer. I'll go ahead and cook you some backstrap. She was thrilled. So that's what we're doing. So I want to take you through what I do, how I cook it, give you a couple points and just let you see what everybody thinks. is the back straps from the deer. I do have them in saran wrap and a freezer bag. Um, the rest of everything else is going to be wrapped in butcher paper and frozen. I kept these in the fridge just because I knew we were going to have them this week. No reason to go ahead and freeze it or do any of that. So I'm going to show you what I like to do right before I go ahead and cook. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do a quick little salt water brine. Uh, it's just ice and water and you just add a little bit of salt to it. Yeah. So, okay, what I've done is added the salt, water, and everything else into the bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and let this soak for probably half an hour or less, just until I see that the remainder of the blood or whatever else is out of the meat. So I have the backstrap in a saltwater brine now to extract any other blood that could be in it. I did bleed out the meat for seven days before I even processed it. So that was immediately after I quartered it. The reason I do that, I like the meat to be aged. That way it takes away any type of gamey taste that a lot of people complain about. I do that with pigs, deer, whatever it is, and even with fish sometimes, I leave them on ice for 24 hours before I even fillet them just because it makes it that much easier. So one tip that I could give you is try that. If you don't do it, go ahead and try it anyway. You might be surprised with how it turns out. Totally different flavor. If you like that gamey taste, that's great. If you don't, give this a shot. I've been doing it with pigs forever, and no one in my family can tell a difference between store-bought pork and what I've harvested myself. All right, so these have been in here for about half an hour, which is plenty. Uh, as you can see, the water's not really discolored too much, which is good. So that means we got majority of the blood out the first time around, which is good. So I'm gonna get these guys out and I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting them into medallions. With deer, when you're cutting little steaks, you want to try and cut them thin and you don't want to cook them as long as what you typically would a steak off of a cow, just because this will cook quicker and you don't want it to overcook. So I'm gonna trim up the excess silver skin that's on it a little bit, prep these a little bit, and then I'm gonna pat them dry and we're gonna allow them to come up to room temperature. So 
I always use paper towels just to pat it dry to make sure that it absorbs all the water off of it. That way there's not any water on it when you go to start cooking or when you're trimming it up. So I'm gonna have to pat these, clean up what's underneath it, and then probably pat them down one more time. But that's just part of it. And as you can see, I didn't get all of the silver skin off and that's okay. You can trim off the silver skin at any point in time when you are cooking this. It's better to have it cleaned up if you're gonna cook it immediately, but if you're going to cook it a day or two later, it's all right. Um, I have actually seen a couple of different people that have suggested leaving silver skin on if you're going to put it in the freezer because it's a, they say that it helps prevent freezer burn. Um, that was actually Steve Rennell on the show Meat Eater, but everyone's got their own way, so you know, cook to your preference and how you prefer to. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim off just the excess silver skin right here. And that's just not real hard. Just take your knife and cut it off a little at a time. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have a good sharp knife. Definitely makes life much easier to do that. So just trim the little bits off. Like I said, there's just little, little tiny bits left on this. Cleaned it pretty well the first time around. But we're gonna get that trimmed up. And then I'm going to start cutting these into medallions. Once the medallions are cut, I'm gonna let it come to room temperature. I'm gonna wait probably about half an hour. So as you can see, I'm gonna cut these into about half an inch. You can cut them vertically into stakes, but I'm feeding my family, so I want the two back straps to go a little bit further. You can see how useful a good sharp knife is. Cuts through this like it's butter. All right, so as you can see, the medallions are cut. Uh, that actually goes a lot further doing it this way. And if you were to chicken fry this, this would give you a lot more to feed to everyone else. So that's why I prefer cutting them into medallions and cooking them like this. It works out great. I'm feeding six people off of two back straps. Hey, it works out. So I come into medallions and like I said, I'm going to cook these as if they were just little tiny mini steaks. And as I mentioned before, and I do want to reiterate, Venison cooks a lot faster and it doesn't cook like beef. So when I put these on, they're gonna go in for maybe a total of four minutes and that's it. Uh, I'm gonna take them out and they will rest in a dish covered in foil. So if they come out a little rare, after they've rested, they should be about medium rare at that point. see I have added butter to my cast iron all I've done here is just added the butter I've already seasoned everything with olive oil so the cast irons already seasoned so I'm just combining the olive oil and butter all I'm gonna be doing is searing the back strap in here moving it over to a dish and covering in foil so that way it will rest
guys. Well, that does it for this video. That's really all I've got. Just wanted to show you a quick, easy recipe. You saw all I used was a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of butter, let it cook, let it rest. That's it. That simple. Threw in the baked potatoes for 450 uh, and for an hour. That was it. Added a little bit of oil to them, threw them in foil, or fixed and have salad with it. Simple meal. It doesn't have to be extravagant, and I guarantee you, your family will love this. I would show you what it looks like as we eat, but I've got five other people that are starving, so we're just going to sit down, have dinner. Like I said, that's all I've got for you, and I'll catch you on next week's episode.